All right, let's hop right into the Brookshires emulator. Over here, you'll notice we have the CPU box, which contains our general purpose registers, GPRSs. They are listed 0 to 15 in hexadecimal. You can also use this for converting your hexadecimal if you're doing lower level uh, work with hex. As you'll notice, it goes to 9. And then we have A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D 13, E 14, F for 15. Let's take a closer look at the fetch step of the machine cycle. PC, or program counter, contains the address in memory of the first set of instructions to be read by the CPU. Each instruction to be executed is loaded into the instruction register, IR, from memory. It is held here to be decoded, prepared, and executed by the CPU in several steps. Let's take a closer look at the fetch step to help us better understand this process. Notice that the program counter is pointing to memory cell A0. This is where the CPU will begin to fetch input for the instruction register. Once the instruction is fetched, the program counter increments to A02 at the end of the fetch phase before the decode phase begins. The loaded instructions are then decoded, prepared, and ultimately executed by the CPU. So underneath that, we have clear and run, which will clear your registers. It will not touch your memory at all. Don't worry about that. So if you have any code over here, you can safely hit clear and run. Same with clear CPU. This one's a little bit clearer uh, as it just clears the CPU here. It does not touch the memory cells. You have run, which will run your code. And then you will have step, which will actually go step by step uh, on your code. It will go from fetching to decoding to executing and back again, as long as you have code there. That is the most useful, in my opinion, for uh, learning the Brookshire's emulator. So you can actually see what it's doing. And technically it's actually faster to click this a whole bunch of times if you want to get to a certain point in your code than to hit run. If you'd want to clear memory, you'll notice we have 10 written here in cell 00. You actually can just hit refresh on your browser and boom, it's cleared. This also clears your CPU. So make sure you don't hit uh, refresh if you have any information on here you want to save. I recommend taking screenshots regularly as kind of a, a backup. All right, moving over to the memory cell. This reads very much like the classic game of Battleship. You start with the vertical and then move over to the horizontal. So if it was A3, memory cell referenced, you would come down here to A and then move over to 3. And this is where our information would be referenced. We'll get to that a little bit later when we get to the opcodes and when we start programming this a little bit, you'll see how this comes into play. The memory and the CPU work together uh, and shortly we'll get into that. But as far as the emulator itself, down here you'll notice the inspector box. This has the address, which is actually referencing the memory cell that you're pointing to. You'll notice it's zero and then uh, X and your location. So this is zero one. If I move down, it's one one. If I move over, it's one two. And if I move down, it goes to two two. And then it also references the hex number we have. So if we actually wanna put a hex number in here, so we'll say F. Click off that and we mouse over we have we now have the hex for 15 we have the binary for 15 we have sign 15 and then we have the floating point uh, notation for 15. this is quite handy uh, myself for converting hex uh, up to 255 so quite quite handy to make this um, so you don't have to jump to a, a converter or do the math yourself Next up, we'll go over the language description table on the right, do some of the examples, and figure out what each opcode does.